coming off uh, the loss against Syracuse uh, the other night. Slow start, obviously, is, is what did you in. It's not the first time that that's happened this season. Uh, how did you address that this week, and, and how do you kind of remedy that issue moving forward? Well, I think regardless of the, the opposition and what their schedule is, uh, you know, starting on time is, is always important. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for us Saturday, um, you know, you come off a big emotional win against your arch rivalry with the Marlies. You know, Syracuse is sitting in Belleville waiting for you. Uh, so there was no, no doubt that the energy level for them uh, and, and the freshness was going to be there from the start. And unfortunately, we weren't able to match that early. And uh, we certainly got into penalty trouble uh, as well. I believe uh, we had to kill three penalties, and there was a fourth that they actually scored on in a delay. So, uh, you know, you never want to get four minors called to you know towards you in that first ten as well. So, you know, hopefully tonight now uh, we can get a better start, specifically on the road against a team that's uh, always difficult to play in this building. And uh, you know, hopefully you learn from that because uh, in terms of the resolve and, and our push back in our fight, um, certainly you, you can't argue with that because uh, we were inches away from uh, tying it up and also had a goal disallowed that, uh, you know, uh, when you look at it uh, after, uh, it should have counted. Uh, but the referee was in a uh, poor position to see what had happened there. So, uh, But that's sometimes a little bit of bad puck luck, you know, and sometimes that happens. And unfortunately, it, uh, it did cost us at least a point. And ultimately, uh, you give uh, a team in your division uh, two points and you get none. Um, you talk about the resolve, and uh, again, you have to pull your goaltender in that game. Antoine Bebo comes in on back-to-back uh, -back nights, wasn't supposed to play. Uh, how do you feel he's kind of handled this uh, goaltending situation uh, in the organization lately? Well, I think he's, you know, he deserves to start tonight, you know, with Mandelizzi healthy and ready to go. Uh, we feel that Bebo earned tonight's start. You know, he played uh, fabulous against the Marlies in which was probably not a 6-1 hockey game and then was forced to come in and play uh, Saturday night. And, uh, you know, I think I mentioned it earlier in the week, uh, probably uh, would have pulled at three uh, if I knew that Bebo was, you know, 100% healthy. And uh, uh, But unfortunately, he played Friday and he was banged up. But you know what? He came in and kept us in the hockey game and uh, that's all you can ask for. So. Uh, good on him, and uh, you know he's a battler, and uh, that's what uh, we like about him. And the uh, revolving door doesn't stop in the crease. Uh, we've got Lassie Thompson up, Jacob Larson's back, and a few guys uh, a little bit banged up this week. Um, what's the latest on the injury front, and and how difficult has it been to kind of manage this? Not that it's necessarily new for for you. Yeah, we've we've seemed to over my tenure been dealing with you know this type of situation uh, quite frequently and uh, I don't think never uh, this early in the season and when I say this early just the extent of the number of bodies that uh, are unfortunately out and uh, you know there's a whole bunch of different reasons you know you've got a broken thumb you've got concussions you've got knee problems you've got eye you know guy uh, stick in the eye you know so there's just a whole different level of uh, of injuries that uh, we've been dealing with and uh, the goaltending situation has been front and center uh, really since the first five minutes of the season uh, when uh, you know when Solgart went down so uh, Solgart is back on the ice uh, his time frame is is to be determined really I'm not quite sure if it's going to be another three four days or a couple of weeks but at least he's back on the ice and progressing Amanda uh, is full healthy and could start tonight but we felt that uh, Bebo deserved tonight's game and we'll get Mandalese back in the net on the weekend um, you know Ridley Greg seven to ten days you know with next week being a, a week where we start Friday instead of Wednesday uh, you know where you're really hoping to have him back uh, Howard like is getting closer he sees the surgeon uh, on Friday to potentially get his cast off and if the thumb is healed and he gets the cast off then it's just a matter of uh, getting some strength back in that hand and also get his conditioning up so uh, he is getting closer and closer and as you know he's a big part of our team and um, um, you know, then you've got so, uh, Lodin home with an illness, you know, so he's out of the lineup today. And uh, we also thought that Crookshank was going to be a week or two. And he comes in and, you know, next thing you know, two days later, he's feeling better and, and is going to play tonight. You know, uh, banged up a little bit, but at least uh, gives us the ability uh, to, to have four lines in the lineup. So it's quite the list. And, uh, you know, you still that can't not even talking about Conacher and Betts uh, and then the movement with uh, JBD up in injured and then now Thompson gone so uh, a lot of fluctuation and uh, you're just in survival mode right now.
A few more minutes here with head coach Troy Mann in Utica. Uh, some good news, and Igor Sokolov uh, surpassed Drake Batherson for the franchise record in goals, uh, scoring his 39th. Uh, is that, first off, a bit of a testament to, to his work and, and how far he's come in the last few seasons? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we talked earlier about somewhat of a slow start in the goal scoring department. And uh, you, you looked at his numbers at one point, and he had almost a point a game. But uh, I did feel that earlier on in the season, he was playing more of a methodical type of game. And now he looks like he's got the jump. You know, he's got that step, and you can see some speed from him. And, uh, you know, that probably goes with a little bit of confidence as well. And uh, ever since he was with Ridley, Greg, and, and Crookshank, they've become a very, very good line. Now, unfortunately, uh, we can't have them together here for the next three games but you know we're going to try Luch there uh, you know Luch has had some success up the, up the middle and going back to last season so we'll see if maybe that chemistry can still remain the same um, but you know I think Sokolov is feeling it right now and uh, we need him to continue to play well. You look at some of the names that he's passed on on that list. Is this again maybe a little bit of a reminder about the potential that he has too? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and, and every player uh, draft pick, young guy's development path is different than others. You know, uh, Drake Batherson needed a full season and parts of a second season. Um, you know, before he became a full-time NHLer and. Sometimes uh, a player needs three years, some need four, some don't need any. You know, it just depends on the player and uh, not very, very few as we see here in Utica tonight. You know, the Holtz kid and the Ball kids, you know, very high-end prospects that are down, uh, you know, not necessarily trying to find their game, but just continuing with their development. So, um, you know, and, and then obviously we, we got to understand that the COVID season and that, you know, us going through COVID has not really helped uh, development of, of young hockey players. And we've seen that in Ontario quite frankly and you know uh, as much as it was great to be able to play 36 games in a COVID season um, and, and guys like Reinhardt guys like Thompson guys like Sokoloff were able to get their feet wet with pro action um, we've said it many many times it's just not the true American League and now we're seeing it here the last season in a bit and um, you know I, I think bigger and better things are coming Sokoloff's way if he continues uh, with his work ethic and uh, how he wants to be a great pro and uh, we'll see where it takes us. You talk about finding your game and Nikita Zaitsev is down here to do just that. Um, he didn't practice before playing the game uh, on the weekend but now he's had a few days to, to get to work with your team. What do you uh, uh, expect out of him tonight? Well I, I don't think Zaitsev can change his game. You know he's not coming down here to run our power play. Uh, he's coming down here to move pucks. He's he come here to help us in D-zone coverage, box outs, and and uh, hopefully protect the middle of the ice better in our D-zone coverage and, and penalty kill. You know, those are his specialties, so nothing's going to change there. Um, you know, and uh, so we got a couple practices under our belt, which is going to help, uh, you know, for him to get thrown into the fire last Saturday. Uh, you know, the Mer American League is organized chaos, you know, compared to the NHL, so that was a little bit difficult for him, but uh, I expect his game to continue to get better and better as he gets acclimated with the coaching staff, his teammates, and the American League in general. Uh, you mentioned the power play uh, up to fourth in the league, which is really nice to see. Uh, what have been the keys to that success? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's certainly David Bell deserves a lot of credit for the power play. Uh, he spends a tremendous, as does Ben Sexton on the PK, they spend a, a tremendous amount of time uh, looking for solutions to, to have a power play the or in PK that's very effective. And uh, with when it comes to the power play specifically, a lot of moving parts. You know, sometimes you're um, making up units uh, on the fly just because of the amount of injuries and transactions we've had. So, um, you know, simplicity sometimes is the best. Uh, but I think Belzey does a real nice job of dissecting the opposition's uh, penalty killing. And uh, when the uh, ears are on and the players are listening, we're able to, uh, you know, execute the game plan and do very well. And uh, the nights that we don't execute Belzey's uh, game plan and the ears are turned off, uh, then we don't have as much success. And sometimes we have to get in the faces of players a little bit to, to uh, you know, to, to, to make sure, like, not that we're trying to overcoach it, but just pick out three or four different things things that are important for the power play of success against Utica, Laval, whoever the opponent is. And so far it's been nice to see uh, the power play uh, in the top five in the league.
All right, and lastly, uh, again, first meeting against Utica this season, around 500 against them last year, and uh, a few returning familiar faces on the other side. Um, what are the expectations tonight and, and the keys for your team to start the week off right? Well, last year, you know, they got off to that fabulous start, and we were a little bit of a slow starting team, so, you know, it was a little bit opposite the second half, and we were able to win some games. Uh, we were clearly outmatched earlier on in the season with a couple losses, but then once we were able to get our team together and start improving, uh, we had some really good battles with them in the second half and got some big, some big wins, specifically in this building. So it's a difficult building to play in. The crowd's always into it, and uh, it's a real fun atmosphere. Um, but for them, I think on paper, they're much better than their record shows. So uh, when you look at them in last place, you can't look at that right now. And the fact that they've got a couple high-end prospects downed uh, to get some games in, that's going to help them. You know, the Holtz kid is dangerous on the ice with that shot uh, at all times. So the power play uh, should be improved from them and uh, they've been a, a great transition team last year just watching them play a little bit against Rochester last week looks like their uh, their their DNA has not really changed they still got the the D jumping up in the second wave and uh, that type of thing so uh, you know our track and our ability to defend is going to be a key for us and uh, special teams will also be a key as, as uh, we want to try and shut their power play down thanks coach